As always, I like to say when Christy sings, it's like butter. It's like butter. And wasn't that band fantastic? They did some great stuff. I always love it when we give Greg a chance to play a little bit, a little melody back there, and the bass comes out, and it's like, okay, we can go home now. Because all the ideas I want to share in the message are in that song, right there. There is a life beyond life. Every single one of us has a life that we are experiencing, but there is something deeper and juicier and more profound underneath it all. This illusion, this screen that we call the human existence is one level of being, but underneath it all there is a power and a presence and a light and a goodness that is so holy, that is so sacred, that when we dip into it, all of this becomes insignificant. And what becomes the most significant is the state of being that we were created in and as, the light of the world. How many lights of the world do we have here today? Oh gosh, come on. I thought it would be really good on Father's Day to uh, recite the Lord's Prayer. We don't do that very often here, and I thought it would be really good to just let the foundation of the house that I want to build today to pray this. So I invite you to pray these words with me silently as I speak them aloud. Our Father, who art in heaven. Yes. What, what do, do you, you ask? ask? Uh, don't interrupt me. I'm praying here. Can't you see that I'm praying? But you, you called me. Called you? I didn't call you. I'm, I'm just praying, okay? Our Father, who art in heaven. There. You did it again. Did what? Called me. You said, Our Father, who art in heaven. Well, here I am. I, what's, what's on your mind? I didn't mean anything by it. I'm, I'm really sorry. I was just simply saying the prayer for the day. Oh, I see. Praying unconsciously, huh? That's too bad. Now, please continue. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Hallowed be thy name. Hold it right there. What do you mean by that? By what? By hallowed be thy name. I don't know what it means. How in the world should I know? It's just part of the prayer. It means honored, holy, wonderful. Well, that, that makes sense. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you really mean that? I suppose so. I... Why not? Well, well, then what are you doing about it? Nothing, I guess. I just think it'd be really cool if you got control of things down here. If you haven't noticed, God, we have really messed things up here on earth, and we could really use your help. Yes, yes. I know. But we have to be in partnership together to make things better. You're right. I go to church. That's nice. But what about the rest of the week? And what about your bad temper? You really got a problem there, you know. And you, are you even aware of it? Now wait just one cotton-picking minute, God. I do not have an anger problem. You need to quit picking on me. I am just as good as everybody else around here. Well, excuse me. I thought you were the one that was praying. Or did you forget? Time to wake up. All right, all right, all right. You win. I suppose there are a few little minor things I could, could work on to make my life a little bit more peaceful. Well, good. Now we're getting somewhere. I'm proud of you. Thanks. <clears throat> Look, God, um, we need to get on with this. They only gave me 25 minutes for a talk, and you've already taken up way too much of that time. Um, can we get on with this, please? Give us this day our daily bread. And... Why'd you stop? I'm scared. Scared of what? I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Try me. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Yes. What about Karen? Oh, I knew it. I knew you were going to bring her up. Oh, she drives me crazy. She is such uh, a... Uh, 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 uh. What about your prayer? Or did you fall asleep again? I didn't mean it. I take it back. Well, at least you're being honest. But it's quite a load carrying around all that bitterness and resentment, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, but I'm going to feel so much better when I get even with her. No, no, you won't feel any better. You'll feel worse. 
Revenge isn't sweet. Holding on to this hatred is like you, like you drinking poison and hoping it will kill Karen. Or like the Atlanta Falcons drafting a wide receiver and thinking it will fix their defense. Or like the Atlanta Braves not resigning Freddie Freeman and hoping they'll win the next World Series. Oops, I, I forgot. Uh, I forgot about that. Uh, disregard that last one. Now, isn't that kind of silly? Well, when you put it that way, yeah, it is. It is kind of silly. When I get down to it, thinking about that moment just gets me all up in knots, and I'm constantly living in tension. You know, more than I want revenge, God. I, I really just want to feel connected to you. I want to feel one with you. All right, I want to be in alignment with God, so on this Father's Day, I'll truly let it go and forgive Karen. Very good. Now, please continue. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's up to you, my friend. What do you mean by that? It's a partnership. Remember? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, you better finish up. You've already taken a big chunk of your 25 minutes. Yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Do you know what would bring me glory? What would really make me happy? No, I don't. I really, I really don't. I really want to partner with you, God. I really want to work with you and co-create. I can see now how much better my life would be and maybe how much better this earthly life would be if I could just be that conscious and wake up and hold up my end of this partnership, this bargain. So tell me, God, how do I make you happy? You just did. What we pray. What we say, what we think, what we feel, what we do, what we express, what we're allowing access into our minds and our hearts, it is important on Father's Day that we wake up and that we are conscious, that we bring to the forefront of the, the energy that we are holding. Father's Day, attendance always goes down. Have you noticed that? We got daddy issues. There are daddy issues in it. Maybe some of you came anyway and you have daddy issues. They're welcome here. Let them be here, and I'm going to own some of my daddy issues today as well. It's so important to be conscious. Father's Day is a great day to wake up because there's a lot of baggage associated with it. But when you bring it to the surface, it can be healed. If you don't deal with it, you can't heal it. You stuff it down, and it's just festering, and it becomes a big cancerous energy that we don't want to carry. So we're going to bring it up today. And the Lord's Prayer is a magnificent prescription for healing. It's not just a rote prayer that one man said at one point. It's a prescription to create heaven on earth, to create a reality that is transformed, to create a reality that's at a higher vibration. Let's look at that. It's a prescription for recognition of the fathers that did an amazing job. Hallowed be their name today. How many of you had a father that just did an amazing job? Hallowed be the name of that man. Hallowed be the name of that man who gave you the gift of, of you becoming you and taught you the lessons that you needed to know. But the, the Lord's Prayer is also a prescription for forgiveness, a releasing of the fathers that didn't do such a great job. How many had a father that just didn't show up quite the way you thought they should have or as well as another father did? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. When the stuff comes up, it is ours to release, to let go of it, and to forgive, and to know that thank, I hope to God that my kids are forgiving me for the ways I showed up and the ways I didn't show up. The Lord's Prayer is a prescription that indicates our partnership as partners, as the source and the fathers of life as we know it. Our own reality, you are a father. The line that says, on earth as it is in heaven, is a clear indication that we are called to be the channels, the portals, and the avenue through which heaven is made manifest. All the ideas in the mind of God are nothing. They're just possibilities. They're energy. We must play our part in that partnership and be the offspring of God to bring those divine ideas into the manifest realm. Yes? 
It is our job. It is our part of that partnership to do that. So, yes, the Lord's Prayer is a prescription for putting our hand into the hand of God, uniting our heart with the heart of God, and you knowing that our spirits are one with that God and manifesting a world. And what better day to do it than on Father's Day as we realize we are the fathers of our own reality. It's a prescription for avoiding the temptation of falling into duality, you and me, us and them. And to fall into the truth that we have always been and will always be one. The prayer starts with our Father. Not your Father. Not my Father. Our Father. One source. One light. One power. One presence. In, through, around, and expressed as all creation. We dip into the same pool. We dip into the same reality of all that is. And we pull from the same wellspring to manifest the life. I'm saying let's drink deeply from that well today knowing that we share that. We are one. We are the same offspring. We are brothers and sisters in the body that is God. It is our Father. It is our responsibility. It is our moment in time. Each one of us has fathered ideas. Have you noticed that? We've fathered ideas. We've fathered thoughts. We've fathered experiences. And we've fathered energies. And they're showing up on the planet today. And we're doing it 24-7, 365. Where you're sitting right now in that seat, you are fathering a reality. By whatever you're allowing access into your brain, and you're allowing it to be nurtured by the thought that you're bouncing around in your head, the feeling in your heart. It may be good, bad, or otherwise. But whatever it is, you are fathering it into the manifest realm. You dipped into the pool, grabbed the energy or the fire that is God, and said, I'm going to use fire for this. Careful what you're thinking. Careful what you're giving access to your being because the universe is responding. On Father's Day, it's responding. And on Tuesday and on Friday and Sunday, it is responding. It knows only to respond to us as its children. It's a father energy that's motivated by the direction you give it. Where are you looking? What are you focusing on? What are you thinking? And what are you feeling? Each of us has given birth to the children of our minds, the children of our hearts, and some of the worst children on the planet, the children of our mouth. I've fathered some kids I wish I could take back. You know, I met Robin Williams used to do that comedy routine. You start to say something, you want to put it back in the noodle. Don't you wish you had that magic wand? You could go back in time and take those children back. I was just kidding. The reality is once it's out, once it's out, the children are roaming the earth. Some of those children were birthed very, very consciously. I've birthed some wonderful, very healthy children in my life. And I've birthed some bratty little problem children in my life as well that just won't go away. The children come home. You ever notice that? Hi, Dad. I'm home. Where'd you come from? I haven't haven't seen you for 15 years, 20 years, and now you're back. Yep, karma sucks sometimes. The children come home to roost. As a father of ideas, I have the power to channel the energy that is God toward the creation of the life I am choosing. I am responsible for the life that I am manifesting, that I am creating. Not a God in some far off distant place, but a God doing business as you, as the avenue and as the portal. I have a responsibility to make a life heaven on earth, to create my, not just my individual life as heaven, but I'm doing it for you. You're doing it for me. We're doing it for people in Ukraine. We're doing it for people that share this planet with us, this beautiful earth home, Gaia. That's going to be as lit up as ever this Wednesday. The summer solstice is here. There's going to be light everywhere. I'm saying contribute to the light. Consciously live your life as the light of the world and play your part in the manifestation of heaven on earth. And it looks like to me we've strayed a long way from that place. I watch the news and I go, what happened to the heaven on earth? Oh, it first has to live in mind and then it has to live in reality. I first have to live it, to be it, to drink it, to to breathe it, and then it will be manifested. And what that means is I have a degree of responsibility. Responsibility, say that with me. Don't you hate that word sometimes? God, I am responsible for the life I am leading. Can't I just blame God or the devil or Karen for my life? It's much easier to do that. It's not that you created everything in life. That, that's malpractice in metaphysics. But let me tell you, you don't have to go on the Maury Povich show 
and take a DNA test that if it's in your life, you had a hand in its creation. So I can look at the TV, I can watch the news, and I can go, boy, who manifested that mess? I am a part of it. My DNA is in the child that we have collectively birthed. And so I take responsibility for my part, the thoughts I'm thinking, the words that are leaving my mouth, because I'm adding to that reality or I'm subtracting from that reality. When it comes to heaven on earth, I'm either adding to that reality or I am subtracting from that reality. Say it with me. I am responsible for life. Together. Now say it like you mean it. I all right, that's a little bit better. I am responsible for the offspring of my mind, for the children of my heart, and the kids that are given life through my words. Choose wisely. Are my children named anger or love? Are my children named fear or courage? Are my children named hate or understanding? And are my children named duality or unity, no matter how difficult it might be. I'd like to introduce you to one of my children. Um, I've spent a lot of time. His name is Vic. Vic and I have spent so many, so many years together, so many wonderful times. In fact, Vic and I have just sat for hours upon hours upon hours, and we just cried, and we just complained and we just whined. Vic is short for victimhood. There's a lot of Vicks walking the planet today. Have you noticed that? You know, but what I've noticed is that lately Vic and I are just not, they're not nearly as close as we used to be. It, there's been a growing separation between us. I think he's a little bit jealous of his younger brother, his younger brother, Billy. <laughs> Billy is short for responsibility and accountability. His middle name is ownership, spiritual ownership. In order to understand this concept of ourselves as fathers of creation, we need to look at a couple of things. The first is our image of God. In unity, we do not teach a God that is a capricious father figure, an old man in the sky who's either blessing or punishing. And some of us have views of our earthly fathers the same way, the flawed entity, personality created in our image the way they're supposed to be. We've created a God that is very capricious and personality-centric. That's not a God that we teach in unity. We teach that God is a fire, an energy, a light, a beautiful source of all that is holy and sacred, a God of law. Say that with me, a God of law. And the laws that are implemented all the time, and we want to remember them on Father's Day, is the law of karma, the law of cause and effect cause and we're, 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 we're walking around this planet expecting somebody else to be the cause of the reality why doesn't somebody do something why doesn't somebody change something why doesn't somebody make this different well why don't you be somebody that's what we talk about here I need to be somebody I need to be the cause of a new reality I need to be the cause of on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in truth, as it is in the mind of God. I must be the cause of something greater than what I am seeing, than what I am experiencing, than what I am knowing in my limited, finite thinking. A God of law, forgive us our debts together as we forgive our debtors. Why doesn't somebody... Do something. On Father's Day, go forgive somebody. Forgive your father. Forgive your mother. Forgive your brother. Forgive your minister. Forgive that guy that wronged you. That's what Father's Day is all about. It's a great prescription to get to heaven on earth. As extension, extensions of God, the universe is responding directly to the thoughts that I am holding. With a universe that's set up this way and it is in our favor because all the power to manifest has been put into your hands. Give us this day the daily bread, the ability to manifest everything I could ever desire, individually and collectively. The power has been put into your hands, and we have wasted the bread. We'll save it a little bit for leftovers next time. 
The time has come on this Father's Day to not waste the bread anymore. It is imperative that we stay awake. Now more than ever, as I watch the news, now more than ever, it is imperative that we stay awake. Everyone say with me, I am awake. I believed you that time. Many people are walking this earth like zombies. Have you noticed that our culture is, you can turn on the TV, you, there's always a zombie movie coming out. We are consumed and, and enamored with zombies. Why is that? Because I think the human race is slowly but surely, drip by drip, becoming a bunch of zombies, a bunch of unconscious beings. We've gone dumb. What, what is it that zombies want to eat? They want to eat your brain. I don't quite get that. But what a great metaphor is that? We are allowing the human ego to eat our brains and putting responsibility on somebody else. We are allowing the human ego to create a, a place of separation, us and them, me and you, and we don't belong to each other. Our brain cell by cell, moment by moment, is being eaten by zombies. And guess what? We are becoming those zombies if we don't stay awake and take the work that we do in this church seriously. The time is now, not tomorrow, to implement the unity that we teach from this platform. Yes? 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 There we go. It's a causal relationship, folks. It takes a very conscious soul to daily say, Thy kingdom come. God's kingdom come. Not my kingdom. Not my desires. Not my wants. But a, a higher vibration and power moving through me. God, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What is the will of God? Call it out. Let me hear. What is the will? Love. What else? Peace. Joy. What is it? Harmony. I thought you said Ireland. <laughs> that wouldn't be bad there. Harmony, peace, joy, c compassion, understanding, generosity. That is the kingdom that we are called to bring to the earth. And it's nobody else's responsibility, but it is ours. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. God's kingdom, God's will on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in theory on Sunday morning between 11.15 and 12.30, it shall be done on earth. It shall be done out there when you're not with beautiful, wonderful people who were kind. Let God's kingdom be born through you and as you. Yes? yes. You are the father of holy ideas and you are not a zombie. You never have been a zombie. Stop living unconsciously and start living to the, the inheritance as a child of light and love that you are. Here's something I want you to recognize. Vic and Billy are the same child. Vic and Billy are not two separate entities. They are the energy of my consciousness. So I'm either a victim or I'm holding myself accountable to being the change I want to see. If you want more love, the song says, give love away. No, no, I'll give love when I get love. I will give it because my father didn't give me love or my mother didn't give me love. I'm going to hold it back. And another brain cell dies and gets eaten by the human ego that says I have to be right or I have to be justified or I have to be better than. The reality is the time has come to let Billy replace Vic. I'm sure we've all seen those TV shows when there's a gentleman, an older gentleman, and he, there's a knock at his door and he opens the door and there's a young lady there. And she says, how can I help you? And she says, do you remember New Year's Eve 1982? No, I don't remember that, sorry. Well, do you remember a lady named Bunny? Oh yeah, Bunny, Bunny's great. That was a really wonderful night. Well, guess what? Bunny's my mother. And you, I think, are my daddy. The thoughts come home. They come back to haunt you. And the inevitable reaction, what is the reaction in those movies? Starts with shock. And then we go into denial. Not mine. Not my child. And then eventually we get to the place of responsibility and accountability. At Unity, we are about getting to the end result more quickly than that. Let's let go of the shock of, oh my God, the minister told me I'm responsible for life. Let's get rid of the denial. I didn't make that mess. Not mine, not my mess. And let's get right to responsibility. And on this Father's Day, realize that we are the fathers and the mothers of the reality that we are experiencing on earth right here, right now. Breathe that in for a second. 
the Word. Give us this day our daily bread. The word in the original language of Jesus, the Aramaic, is lachma. Lachma. Say that with me. Lachma. It's interesting that lachma has a double meaning. It means bread, but it also means understanding. Give us this day the understanding that all the power of the universe has been placed into my mind, into my heart, into my soul. Give us this day the understanding that I have at my fingertips the ability to father holiness, to father sacredness, to father the divine ideas of peace, joy, harmony, and love. The bread of possibility has been placed into your hands. Ours is to make a meal around it. It's the substance, the substance of all creation, the bread of life, that which is standing under all creation, all manifestation is the bread. Give us this day the understanding that I've used the bread in an inappropriate way. Wrong thinking, stinking thinking we sometimes say around here. And when we wake up, we begin to understand that we are not defined by the mistakes of our father. You're not defined by the mistakes of your mother. You're not even defined by your own mistakes in 1982 or any thought that you had leading up to this now moment. You are defined by the choice that you make today. That is grace. Grace. You're only defined by the way that you are awake and conscious now, not the zombie you were yesterday, but the Christ that you are today, the Buddha that you are in this moment. And in fact, say that with me. I am the Christ. I am the Buddha. I am the Atman. I am not a zombie. The time for the night of the living dead is, is past. It's time for us to wake up. Now, it may be a shock to you, for some of you who think uh, so highly of me. I didn't have the perfect father. Not even close. In fact, one of my dad's charms is he owns readily. I, I'm going to call him later on, and it's going to be the same conversation. I'm so lucky that you're my father. I'm so grateful you're my father. And he's going to say, oh, I screwed up a lot. I made a lot of mistakes. I could have done it much better. On Father's Day, I can belabor the mistakes that my dad made. They're right there. I can pull them up, and I can have a litany of the mistakes that my father made. Or I can choose to be the Christ and look at the good moments that are between the mistakes. And there may be few and far between. There's a lot of them in my house, so I was blessed and lucky. But I used to tell my piano students, they'd play a piece of music, a wonderful piece of music and they'd make three or four mistakes and they'd finish the, the piece and they'd say, oh, I screwed up here and I screwed up there and I screwed up there. And I said, how many right notes did you play? Too many to count. So I will once again on Father's Day tell my father that he played a lot of right notes. And I have memories, the precious memories of my father. And it was not intimate. We did not have an intimate relationship unless we were doing something. You know, us guys tend to do that sometimes. We can't get too intimate and get too real and authentic unless we're doing something. My father taught me how to build a fire. Fire is really big in my household. Fireplaces are big in my household. And I remember sitting with my father on the hearth, and I got spiritual concepts, spiritual lessons that he taught me being a devout atheist. He didn't need a church. He didn't need a class. He didn't need the next Wayne Dyer book. He didn't need Deepak Chopra to come speak in order to teach me the principles that have made my life the way it is today. He didn't even know he was giving me spiritual concepts, and he would be aghast if he knew I was teaching these concepts that he gave me in a church and attributing God to these concepts. As I sat there, those were precious moments, not the least of which is don't play with fire. Let's put that next slide up there. These are the lessons my father taught me. Stay awake. If you have fire in your hands, you cannot go unconscious. And I learned that the hard way. My father taught me that at the heart. God is a fire. The creative ability to manifest heaven on earth is a fire. And if you're not awake, you're going to get burnt. Fire can light the world. Fire, do God doing business as you can warm the world and make it the most transformative, beautiful place. And if you go to sleep as a zombie, you're not just eating your brain cells, you're, you're burning the, the, the beautiful kingdom of God that is everywhere present. What else did I learn from my father? My father taught me consciousness first and foremost, but he taught me that a fire needs to breathe. I remember hours and sitting there making sure the logs were positioned just right to get air in there. It needed oxygen. 
And then sitting with my father, the most intimate thing we ever had together was going, (sighs) (sighs) it needs air. My father taught me about Sabbath. My father taught me about space. How many of us could use that lesson on Father's Day? I am fathering stress in my life because I'm not creating space in my life. The fire that is God is not burning as brightly in me and as me because I've made my life so convoluted. All the ashes have smothered the very fire. Build space into your life, into your calendar, into your your moment, and into your family. One thing my father taught me, when do you leave the fire alone? You know, those of us guys, we love to play with the fire. I love to poke it and to prod it. And my father taught me there comes a moment when you quit poking the fire, when you quit messing with it because you're going to put it out. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Father's Day is a day to quit messing with the fire, to quit rehashing the story to quit living the story again and again and again. Here it is, Father's Day, and I'm telling the same story. The time has come to step back, let the story go, and to maybe let the fire burn on its own and let something holy and beautiful manifest because I'm willing to step back and quit poking the fire. My father also taught me about fuel. He taught me about what the best fuel is. Any Any of you who make fires, what's the best fuel for a fire? Dry wood. What kind of wood? And my dad taught me about oak. He said oak makes the prettiest, best-smelling fire. I found that a little lighter fluid works much better. But (laughs) but, but you get out of control with lighter fluid. But what fuel are you tending the fire of your awareness of God in your life? What comes in is what's going out. And what you are allowing access to your life, the fuel that you're bringing in is either positive or negative, plain and simple. But if you think you can be in the presence of that kind of negativity and anger and resentment and duality and not be spewing it, you're deluding yourself. We become like the people we hang out with. My father taught me that at a heart. Careful the fuel that you are using. I think it was my father was the first one to tell me the story, we've all heard it, of the young Indian brave that went to the chief and said, I need help. There's these two wolves fighting inside of me. One of them is good and one of them is bad. Tell me, which one's going to win? And my dad told me the story, not knowing it was going to show up in churches all over the country. And the, the chief said, the one that you feed, that's the one that's going to win. So I'm asking you, are you feeding the Christ or are you feeding the zombie on Father's Day? Let's get real. Are you feeding that which is holy and sacred or are you feeding that which is tearing down, that which is divisive with the words coming out of your mouth, the thoughts that you're allowing access and the feelings that you're harboring and carrying around the planet? I'm going to invite the band to come back up. Lead us not into temptation. It's more accurately translated as don't let me stay in ignorance. When you go back to the original Aramaic, don't let me stay in unripeness. Don't let me stay in ignorance. That's the prayer I want to pray on Father's Day, a prescription to staying awake. Don't let me stay in my human ignorance, but let me shine and be at a higher level. Don't let me unconsciously feed the zombies and the negative ignorance of limitations, but consciously feed the idea and the truth that hallowed be my name. Say that with me. Hallowed be my name. Today, I want you to leave here knowing hallowed be your name. Not a God. The Our Father is not about a God separate It's about God doing business as Mama Cecilia. And I personally asked her to be here today because she is the father and the mother for me of a higher consciousness. Because she reminds me that the name Richard is hallowed, is sacred, is honored, is worthy. Hallowed be Laura's name. Hallowed be Shirley's name. God's doing business as us folks. And it's time that we take responsibility for that partnership on earth as it is in heaven. One thing my dad did not teach me, but other father figures did in churches, was that personal relationship with that divinity. 
a personal relationship with the father and the mother within. Our father in the original Aramaic language of Jesus was not father. It was Abba. Abba. Say that with me. Abba. Can you feel the difference? Father. Abba. And it's important to recognize that Abba is neither male or female. It is both. It's as if you were praying Papa and Mama. The truth that we're sharing here today is as close as the breath you just took. It's the heartbeat right now beating in your chest. That's how intimate it is. And my father couldn't give me that. He didn't have the ability to give me that. So I went and found father figures. I had Joel, Joel Blackford sitting there, who gave me that sense of intimacy with that which my father will never know. And maybe he'll come back sometime and know it. But maybe I've given him a glimpse of it because I've been a father to my father to show him a higher way. That I don't have to just be intimate with my father sitting on a hearth making a fire, but I can embrace my father and tell him I love him. And let me tell you, this year I celebrate my relationship with my dad. I have worked for 30 years to get my father to say the words, I love you. This year, before we hung up the phone, my father said it to me. That's a miracle. And if I, let me tell you, if I can get my father to say, I love you, we can get people in Russia to say, I love you. Leaders in Russia to say, I love you. And I'm, you may call me a Pollyanna. Go ahead. You may say I'm the only one. Imagine. We sang Imagine at the Moonflower concert. I'm not the only one. Join me. Join me in love having a greater capacity of fathering the idea of love on this Father's Day to a greater reality. On earth as it is in heaven, the original Aramaic of language, the words were te te malkuthok. Say that with me. Te te malkuthok. Te te describes a site of union, a site of fertility, a bridal chamber. You are a bridal chamber and a state of fertile soil. You're not a zombie. You are fertile soil. And Malkuthak, well, it describes the Divine Mother. It means womb. You are the womb of a deeper and higher reality. Take the responsibility. Say that with me. I am a womb. I am a father. I am a mother. I am a womb. Together, I am a father. The mother and father energies are showing up on the planet and they're showing up as you. If you had a nurturing father, good on you. Go pay it forward. If you had a nurturing mother, good on you. Go pay it forward. If you didn't, go give somebody that which you didn't get. And then go back to those people. They may have transcended. Go back to them knowing that spirit is not limited by time and space or distance. I love you. I love you love you. No matter what you did, no matter what happened in 1982 with Bunny, I love you and I love myself to a higher reality because I'm only defined by the reality of right now. In the line, thy will be done, will is more accurately translated as heart's desire. God's heart's desire be done. Your heart's desire, not your zombie desire, not your brain's desire, your heart's desire be done on earth as it is in heaven. If you want more love, give more love. If you want more understanding, give more understanding. If you don't like what the world is showing, go bring into the middle of the darkness the light that you are, the light that you have always been. That's what I want to father on Father's Day, but I want to father it the day after Father's Day. I want to father it every time I take a breath a higher and more profound reality. Find the fuel and know that you're not defined by your father's mistakes, your mother's mistakes, but by the moment of breathing together as a symbol of oneness and being fuel for each other to create a better reality on earth.